Hi class, welcome to the first lecture of computational data science. I'm Prof. Doreen Hermans, and today we'll be seeing a little bit about uh, what data science is before moving on to big data and some MapReduce. Um, so first things first, who am I? Uh, I am Doreen. I did my bachelor, master's in business engineering in Antwerp. After this, I moved into to the Swiss mountains and I worked as an IT lecturer for a while. In fact, the middle photo here shows our campus there, which was pretty gorgeous. If you ever can visit, I highly recommend it. Um, after my Swiss adventure, I moved back to Antwerp to get my PhD in applied economics. Antwerp is also a very gorgeous campus. It's the one on the left, uh, but very different from Switzerland or Singapore one. Um, so after being in Antwerp for a few more years, I uh, moved to London and I was a Marie Curie Fellow at the Centre for Digital Music. So I worked as a postdoc on AI for automatic music generation there. And in fact, uh, my research interests are how to apply traditional AI optimization technologies in new domains such as music, audio, video, uh, multimedia. And perhaps, uh, given my background in economics, I also have a weak point for NLP for finance prediction models. Okay. If you're interested to read more about my research, uh, check out my website. Uh, I, I post my articles there and uh, uh, my students share their work as well. Here in Singapore, when I'm not doing work, uh, obviously I'm not traveling at the moment, but I do have my hands full with the little one in the photo there, uh, which has joined us nine months ago. Okay. All right, so about this class. This class will be taught by myself and Prof. Suyanya. Uh, we will pretty much be teaching all alternating weeks. Hi, a quick update for this year. Um, you'll find the names of the TAs on the slide. You can contact them for any questions. Uh, they'll be available to you. Um, we have also set up a Discord group where we can discuss and chat about the course. Uh, you will find a link and a QR code there to uh, register in the group. Discord has a mobile phone app, it has a desktop app, so it's very easy to be um, reachable and, and to discuss the course. Um, unfortunately, as you know, we have to do the first six weeks of this course fully online, so even the labs will be online. Hence, uh, do visit the class forum because I'll be posting some questions there. You can ask questions and we can sort of connect, at least in some way, this first half of term. Normally in this course you get 20% of the mark uh, for the checkoff in the labs, but because all of the labs will be online this first half of term, we will be asking you to submit your lab results on eDimension and um, we will just be grading if you did them or not. Uh, it's not really homework, uh, but it's just checking that you do the exercises. So myself, I'll be providing Google Collab notebooks for you. It will be a guided tutorial with some questions at the end. And then I just need you to run the notebook after you perform the questions and submit it on eDimension. I'll provide details, instructions um, through an announcement. Of course, you're all curious about assessments. We have lab checkoffs. So I'll talk more about that when we're actually doing the lab. But basically, you'll get exercises during the lab. Uh, I want you to participate in the class and actually do the exercises. And if you do them, you'll understand them. And then you get the full check off. Okay. There'll be a final exam at the end in week 13, uh, which counts for 40% of the marks. And then uh, most excitingly, there is a final project. Okay. During the final project, you get to solve a data science problem of your choice. Okay. So I'll guide you through this. This is an integrated project that goes along from, let's say, week two till week 13. Um, as we go along and we teach you all the steps involved in the data science process, we, I, we are inviting you to apply these steps on your own project. Okay. So this is very cool. Um, we will first agree on 
well, your project groups and what your topic is going to be about. Once you have your approval on this, you're going to be doing data collection, data visualization, data pre-processing, predictive models, comparing different models, evaluating re your results, etc. Okay, so all of this will result in sort of a, uh, an initial presentation after the midterm break in which we, we see if you're doing well and give you some pointers for the future then a final presentation and a final report at the end of the course. Okay. So um, what are we going to be seeing? I've made an overview. It might change a little bit. Um, you see the initials DH, which is myself, and SP, Suyanya Poria, the other teacher. Um, and you see the topics of each week. So we'll start with an introduction to data science, what is big data, what is MapReduce and Hadoop, and this is what we're going to be practicing in this week's lab. We'll move on. In week two, we're going to be talking about how do we load data, what are feature vectors, uh, how do we deal with large number of features, how do we reduce dimension. Okay. Basically, from lab two on, all of the labs are going to be in Python, um, mostly using scikit-learn or Keras. In week three, it's me again, we're going to be talking about data visualization and how to do web parsing, data handling in Unix. Okay. And uh, there might be a guest speaker, I'm still setting that up. Then uh, in week four, we're going to be talking about regression and logically also classification the week afterwards. Then in week six, things get interesting and we move into neural networks, uh, where Suryanya is going to talk about the multi-layer perceptron model and how to implement that in Keras. Then we have our initial project checkoff, so you present your work and we give you pointers. And then we move into some of the more complex uh, de deep learning, neural network stuff, word to vec natural language processing, NLP models, um, Sequence models, sorry, first convolutional neural networks, so how do we work with images? Uh, then we have clustering and community detection, which I think might be replaced by uh, more NLP work uh, this year. Uh, I'm sure Shoyanya will, will talk about this in, in detail. Week 12, we have temporal sequences, memory models, think, recursive neural network, long short-term memory, self-attention model, transformers, etc. And then in week 13, we get to see the final student presentations. Okay. All of this content, content will become clear as we move along. We don't have a handbook for uh, this class so your material is basically going to be what we share in class the videos and the slides and um, but if you do want to look up things and have a bit of a background i can uh, redirect you to some of these books um, uh, data mining which is uh, basically the accompanying book of weka this is a tool for data mining and it it very easily um, introduces some of the concepts uh, of data mining to the to reader. Uh, it is in the library. Then there's also Introduction to Data Mining, a very clear, clearly written book that might give you some insight. Uh, there is Andrew Ung's book, Machine Learning Yearning, which is an open source book. At least a draft version is on his GitHub. All right, so, so you don't need to study these books, but if you do have questions or you want to know something in more detail, these are good reference manuals for you. Okay. However, we live in a, an era of data, of big data, so uh, that means we don't have to rely on manuals for everything anymore. We can actually uh, find some pre-digested or pre-processed uh, articles that explain certain concepts to us very simple way. My absolute favorite would be uh, this one, Towards Data Science, which is a medium publication. It's really an excellent research resource for data science technology. Okay. Then there's some of the classics, Kaggles for dataset, KD Nuggets. Um, obviously, if you want to research code snippets, check out GitHub, Bitbucket, and the likes. If you're stuck on something and you want to ask questions, Stack Overflow is your research resource to be. So Stack Overflow 
if you've ever posted there, you might have gotten some, some comments or feedback because people are very particular about how you articulate your question. They want you to be clear and concise so people can actually answer it given all the information that you have above. And I find this a very good exercise to write down your question and think of what information is needed to solve this because often I find if I post this question on Stack Overflow by posing the question half of the time, it's already solved just by me thinking about how to phrase it. And the other half of the times I can go get my lunch and people have been discussing my question by the time I get back, which is also nice. All right, so that's about the course. So let's dive into what data science is. So in the 1960s, there was a term datology, which was basically used to um, indicate the science of data and data processes. So if you remember, or if you know a little bit of computer science history, back in the 1956 is when computers such as the Iliac mach machine were uh, conceived. Iliac computer, if you've ever seen pictures, is this huge machine that fills a room where you have to use patch cables to actually do the programming. I, I can go on about just this computer, because it's quite fascinating. Um, in fact, they used to hire uh, women to program all these patch cables, and they referred to the women as computers. So actually, the first computers were these ladies who were programming this Iliac machine. Anyway, got sidetracked. Uh, in the 1960s, when we started having computers, we could start thinking of something like the field of data science. It wasn't actually used, the term actually wasn't used until 1996, um, when the International Federation of Classification Societies organized a conference. The conference was on data science classification and related methods. It has become super popular in the early 2000s with Harvard Business Review calling it the sexiest job of the 21st century. Okay. I'll leave it up to you to see if you agree with this after uh, this course. Uh, but in any case, we can consider data science today as an interdisciplinary field that uses scientific methods, processes, algorithms, and systems to extract knowledge and insights from data in various forms, both structured and unstructured. So there's a lot in this definition, and as you see in the next slides, we'll actually sort of break down everything. Let's start by interdisciplinary. Um, this graph is one of the many graphs that you'll find on the internet like this. Um, and all of these sorts of graphs have circles or Venn diagrams for data science, data mining, AI, machine learning, statistics, and they're all sort of interconnected. And in this particular one, data science is quite central. This is because data science really relies on all of the technologies, the mathematics, the statistics, the pattern recognition, visualizing the data, and also using all these techniques to actually get the patterns, get the insights, and get the knowledge, right? So we want to use the technologies of machine learning, but in this course as well, we are not going to go super deep into machine learning algorithms. Here, in this, especially this computational data science class, we want to offer you tools, the right tools, to tackle problems and gain insight and data. Okay. So it is very tricky for us as lecturers as well to design a course uh, that is different from the deep learning course, different from the AI course, the machine learning course, the computer vision course, because data science integrates all of these technologies. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be, do, be doing in the next few weeks is we're going to learn how to use these technologies, these existing technologies as toolboxes, uh, and these will give us the power to get knowledge from data. Mm -hmm. Unavoidably, there is a little bit of overlap between all these courses. I don't mind that so much because honestly, learning neural networks, maybe this was because it's 10 or 15 years ago, for me, 
was rather confusing and I found it actually helpful to hear from multiple sources uh, how the inner workings of these algorithms actually look like. Okay. So I hope that you find it useful. I know that some of you might be taking the machine learning course this week, uh, this, this week and this term, so I do hope our focus should be different. Right, so talk about machine learning. Machine learning really is concerned with the development of new algorithms and techniques that allow computers to learn. It's not just data science, okay? So they're really building algorithms computationally. Uh, they're looking into the theory of why certain algorithms works, how they need to, to uh, how they work internally Whereas here, we're going to be looking more from a zoomed out perspective. Okay. So what is machine learning? Basically, you have a data set, right? And you have an algorithm or a model that can be trained using that data. Okay. And it will extract the patterns that are, hopefully, it will extract and find the patterns that are in that data set. So it can make predict predictions about future data. That's really all that is. Okay. We have a data set. We don't know anything about the data. Machine learning algorithms will find patterns and then use that to predict, make predictions on new data. Okay. Why do we need machine learning? Sometimes we simply don't have the human expertise. Okay. If we're going to be uh, riding a Mars rover around on Mars, uh, we're going to to, we can't really possibly give it rules. Uh, it will have to go and adapt. Okay. We cannot train a machine vision uh, or, or actually program with rules a machine vision algorithm for autonomous vehicles on Mars if we've never uh, seen this before. Okay. Or we don't have any rules about it or we cannot explain it. Okay. Same with things like speech processing. For instance, um, how do I translate speech, spoken word, into text? There are no rules for that. Okay. We cannot really write down how to do it. So we have to train a model to find patterns that correlate with certain words, written down words. Okay. So sometimes solutions need to be adapted automatically to a user. If you're going to be doing content recommendation, you, you really can't specify any rules because it's very personal and it needs to be changed in time. Same with things like emails arriving in your inbox. It needs to be happening on the go. Junk emails, topics change all the time. We need to uh, train our model to do that. Okay. Sometimes there's just too much data for humans to process as well. And that's what computers come in very uh, useful. They can process enormous amounts of data and discover anomalies, for instance. Humans are also way more expensive than humans, so sometimes uh, we want to replace humans. Zip code recognition is here uh, an example. You're probably familiar with the very famous MNIST dataset. MNIST has letter recognition, uh, sorry, number recognition, and this dataset was actually made from data from the US Post Office. Um, so that they could automate the, the sorting of the envelopes according to zip code. You know, 10, 15 years ago, uh, some of my friends in college were actually doing student, uh, student jobs in the summer, uh, looking at envelopes, this zip code there, this zip code there. It's a lot. It's a fun job. It starts at 2 a.m. to 6 a.m. And... Uh, yeah, they really enjoyed it. So sometimes humans are too expensive and even students are too expensive. So you want to automate it with a machine learning model. Okay. Now, in data science, we'll be using machine learning models, but data science goes beyond because it really includes the finding of the data, the interpreting of the data and coming to knowledge or an integrative system in your business. While machine learning is great, we have to keep in mind that data is also a little bit dangerous and it can be misused. So it's just something that we should always keep in mind. There can be security issues, data can be 
spoofed. Um, we've done some research on audio spoofing, for instance, if you have a voice authentication um, system on your home, then somebody could record your voice and uh, you know, uh, play back your voice to get access to your home. We're developing systems to, to counteract the spoofing, machine learning systems, uh, but it's still something that we need to keep in mind. Okay. We can also learn biased models. So a famous example here is uh, Amazon, who developed a machine learning model for who they would hire based on the incoming resumes. And turns out that their model was biased to hire white male uh, applicants. This is because the actual hires were biased to uh, white male applicants. And the machine learning models just learns patterns that occur in real life based on the data. So it's something to be aware of that our data is not perfect. And the machine learning will take over the biases in our data. Okay. Um, next, there's also information warfare. Okay. You can manipulate people uh, by fake posts on social networks. Uh, it's, it's a very prominent issue these days and uh, it's just things that we should be aware of. There is, however, machine learning research to address this, to find fake news, to find security spoof data, and to even identify bias in models. Okay. What I find very interesting, I found this sort of infograph on uh, Wolfram Alpha, which shows the history of computable knowledge. Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to be questioning you on the data of all this. So because of this sort of increase on in both data, availability of online data and the computing knowledge to, to deal with that data through technology such as neural networks, really uh, makes that uh, we ha now have tremendous opportunities in the field of data science. Okay. So I mentioned that data science is more than just machine learning. In fact, there's a few uh, methodologies that we can use to understand the KDD process, knowledge, discovery, and data mining. So first of all, we have to set our goal, our application, and we need to understand it. Okay. It's important to do a little bit of research on your domain. Do you want to make stock market predictions? Then really think what are sort of the financial indicators that influence the market? What are the macroeconomic influences that influence our problem? So we need to, this is very important, and this is what will make your model work better. If you understand, you set a clear goal, you understand the mechanisms that influence your goal. Okay. You'll need to create a data set or find a data set online, use one of the open data sets. Uh, then, this data set usually will be developed for another purpose, so you'll need to do data cleaning and pre-processing. Um, and then we get to sort of the area that we often refer to as data mining itself. We're going to be doing data reduction and projection. For instance, I mentioned reduction. If we have too many variables, our model is going to have a hard time finding the most appropriate ones so we can reduce the dimensions. Something we'll be, we're going to be seeing in the next weeks. Then we're going to be choosing a data analysis task. Are we doing regression, classification, clustering, etc.? And once we have our task, we choose the appropriate algorithms. We're going to do a decision tree. We're going to train a neural network, a support vector machine, etc. Once you've chosen your task, goal, algorithm, cleaned your data, then you can actually train the models. And once you've trained the models, there's actually a ninth step. Okay, you probably also want to compare the models, see which ones perform best. And then once you're ready to actually deploy it, this is actually quite an, a feat of engineering usually because you'll need to refresh your model on the go. The data is going to be growing exponentially. So this is also quite of a tricky part. Another very related methodology is the SEMA methodology. Okay. 
time. The SAMA says sample from dataset first. So identify input datasets. Sample from a larger dataset or partition a dataset into training, validation, and test sets, as we'll see later on as well. Once you have your dataset, you can explore them using visualization, something we'll be doing in week three. Then you can modify data, do data augmentation, perhaps. Um, all of these concepts, I, I want to explain them to you now already, but they're going to come up in the next few classes. Uh, and then we select the model, the algorithm to fit the model. And again, then we're going to assess them, compare them, test data sets, evaluate re reliability. Something we often do in data science is we do an ablation study, meaning that we will have, let's say, a neural network model. And we're going to remove different components and test all combinations with each component removed and see which component works best, has the most influence, and in total, in the end, which model performs best. Okay. So in data science, we really want to come from data. We're creating information, knowledge, understanding, but we really want to get wisdom out of it. Right, so what are some of the applications of data science? This is where I usually have the class, uh, have an interactive discussion with the class. However, um, we're just going to uh, show you what applications I have. For instance, fraud prediction. I, my bank alerts me when there's an unusual transaction on my credit card. How do they predict this? They have all this data about how I spend my money and if they see something that doesn't fit their predictive model, then, uh, or that has a different uh, output in their prediction, predictive model than usual, then they will flag a fraud, fraud prediction. Um, document classification, this is a classic uh, spam filters in your email, right? Perhaps uh, there's automatic classification of literature, of lyrics, uh, but it goes beyond classification of documents. Now we do automatic audio classification, automatic image classification, etc. Customer churn prediction. Will a customer return or will it leave? Okay, this is important so that you can recommend, make different recommendations if you see that they're not going to be making another purchase. Maybe it's because you're recommending the wrong product to them. Bioinformatics, genetics uh, is big on this. MRI uh, diagnosis, identifying or segmenting breast cancer images, uh, brain images. Uh, personally, I've done some uh, research on uh, cough sound classification. In fact, we're doing some COVID cough sound classification now, but we've done asthmatic and upper versus lower respiratory tract infection, uh, which we can detect by just feeding samples of somebody coughing into our machine learning model. Okay. Counterterrorism, so a lot is done on machine learning, analyzing social network data, any, any data the government can, uh, can find on us. Okay. These are just a handful of applications. Common data analysis tasks include classification and regression. I'd say these are the two most popular ones. Um, causal modeling uh, is a conceptual model that describes the causal mechanisms of a system. Okay? They're found in applications in signal processing machine learning. But we always have to be very careful with causality because really because something is correlated doesn't mean it's causing something. Okay? Uh, we have similarity matching. Uh, I do some music research. Finding similar songs is something that Spotify does, for instance. Uh, link production, so link prediction, uh, predict possible future links in your network. So if you have a network of people who might be connected in the future, who might be connected to a product in the future, etc. Okay. Uh, co-occurrence grouping, so co-occurrence networks really are generally used to provide a graphic visualization of potential relationships between people, organization, concepts biological organisms like bacteria, etc. Okay. 
And then we have profiling, as, which is refers to the process of uh, construction and application of user profiles generated by computer data analysis. Okay. So think of it as uh, crime scene analysis, where we're trying to profile a killer. So you notice that there's two columns here. We have supervised and unsupervised methods. There's actually semi-supervised uh, methods as well coming up. Um, but uh, in the most simple case, supervised means that we have labeled data. That means classification. I'm classifying an image to be a dog or a cat. I have a bunch of images which are labeled with dog or cat. Supervised data. Sorry, supervised method using labeled data. Unsupervised method, the easiest example would be clustering. You have some data, you have images, let's say, but you don't know what they are. You don't have any label for the image, but what you could do is you could cluster them into similar uh, groups. Okay. One thing we have to keep in mind and this is why we have this step number eight in our methodology uh, to compare our methods. What we have to keep in mind is that there's no free lunch theorem. Okay. What does that mean? There's no algorithm that works best for every problem. Right? And this is especially relevant for supervised learning. Okay. It's not because deep learning is the latest technology, transformers is the latest network, that it will work best. No, you, for your data, your particular problem, you're going to have to experiment with different models and see what works best for you. This is why we do things like ablation studies in which we can uh, test different models with different configurations, different hyperparameters, and uh, see which performs best. This is also what you're going to be doing in your data science project. So what generally is the impact of data science? Uh, well, basically we have, as one example, our life in the cloud. A lot of our personal information is increasingly stored in the cloud. Okay. It might not be, be seen by anybody else than us, but it's still there. And the companies that store it for us. We have our social life on Facebook, TikTok, wherever. We have our career data. We have our search history. We have our Fitbit, um, or in my case, Nokia uh, Steel, which is very nice, by the way. Um, we have our medical data. They even have our heart rate. They know where we are at any location, know what music we listen to, what movies we listen to. Our whole life is stored somewhere in the cloud. Okay, So this has many, many advantages because uh, we... If we're about to get a heart attack, we can get an app that alerts us. Um, we get the best movie recommendations possible. Spotify always has great playlists for us, but it comes at disadvantages. What if somebody steals this data? What if the government explores this data? What if insurance companies use this data to give you worse health uh, policies? Um, what if I don't have the right to access my own data? Okay. What if a company thinks that I have this profile, but I've actually changed now. Okay. I used to be a meat eater, but now I'm vegan and I don't want to have all these uh, meat related pro products on my profile page. Okay. Some examples. So data science is also used for science. This is another way data science impacts our life. So in fields like phys physics, bioinformatics, earth science, we use big data. Uh, and uh, to make all sorts of predictions. Okay, I've just done uh, a project on uh, climate change prediction using big data. So that's very interesting. So we use uh, huge amounts of weather data over the entire globe in a grid-like methodology, whereby we do predictions as what the water level is going to be like, what the temperature is going to be like tomorrow. Okay. Another example mentioned here is healthcare. Uh, it's not hard to imagine. Uh, we data science can can predict everything, right? Our companies can even know when we miss our morning run and when we're sort of slouching, not feeling so well, we're not exercising so well. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to pull up a very few 
examples of companies or, or studies that have been done using data science. And as I mentioned, my research is uh, focuses a lot on music, AI for music, data science for music. And uh, that's why I mentioned here this one uh, website, which is from Towards Data Science. Again, this is an excellent research resource. The Spotify This Is playlist, you might be familiar with it. You can say, uh, this is Tina Turner. I don't know, every artist has a This Is playlist to have their best uh, songs. So what they did in this study is they analyzed the data using the Spotify API, which used to be by Equinest, but they got acquired. Spotify API gives you a bunch of audio features, such as the one on the picture. And based on these audio features, they actually managed to visualize some of the data of each artist. Okay, so here in this spider graph, you see some of the musical features for each of the uh, artists. Have a look at this article and go through their visualizations. It's a very, really nice uh, application, and you might see some interesting data about some of your favorite artists. Another case study is Netflix. They were uh, in the game very early on. Netflix has about 129 million subscribers in the US alone this year. Um, obviously, Netflix does video recommendation. And they established the Netflix prize in 2006, 2009 as a crowdsourced way of improving their algorithms. So they just uh, gave away 25 uh, data from of 25 million users uh, and they let people develop algorithms for them. Excellent idea, right? Okay. Other organizations such as Smart MRT or in this case Transport for, Transport for London uh, also collect lots of data um, using the access cards and um, the ticketing systems entry uh, exit. And they're used to visualize and produce maps. And then they send messages to people and com commuters over social media to recommend them alternate uh, routes in case of congestion, which in London happens a lot. So we're in this data science class. And data science is very multidisciplinary. We have maths and statistics. We have domain expertise that we need, but we also will need some hacking skills. So you'll need to be able to process huge amounts of data, uh, maybe having some terminal skills, terminal as in bash, uh, will allow you to deal with the big data a little bit better. So that's something I'm going to be going over with you in week three. So I hope you'll be enjoying the way we set up the course. Um, just want to mention some useful tools to you. Uh, if you can use Graphic user interfaces. Weka is a very, very basic, but also very non-basic tool because it has so many algorithms in there. It can be used as a Java library, but it also has a nice user interface. Python is one of the number one uh, toolboxes nowadays for uh, data science. We'll be using Python in nearly all the labs. Um, R, very popular as well, which they use in the Analytics Edge course. Uh, some other graphic software is Tableau, which does really great map visualizations. We have Orange and Rapid Miner as well. Some of these are depicted. Some free tools uh, for quick analysis. Okay. Right. So we have some upcoming labs. All of the labs can be done through Google Collab. So if you don't know Google Collab, register for it. It's going to be very useful for you. So normally all labs will be in Google Collab with Python, except this week's lab is a little bit different because it's on Hadoop and MapReduce, which usually runs on a separate server. And the way we do it normally in the lab is we install a virtual machine that runs the server, but it requires a lot of hands-on debugging. So it's not really feasible to do this in an online class or an online lab. That's why I found you an emulator that runs entirely in Google Collab. So in the lab demonstration, I might still use the virtual machine. So apologies if there's any discrepancies there. I'll try to make everything as clear as possible. In any case, this will be a lot easier for you because it doesn't require any installation. I hope you enjoy the labs.